Hello everyone, my name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the technical enablement at Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and this is the portion 3 of the data migration. Uh, we're talking about data transfer services and storage gateways. So on this part we're going to cover the online transport, we're going to cover pretty much the storage gateway uh, side. Okay. So for online transport, there's you know a couple ways you can do in order to move data from your on-premises environment to the cloud. Uh, when you're talking about online transport, it relies over to uh, internet connectivity or a bandwidth that you might have on your on-premises environment to allow your connection from your location to the cloud. So there's three options you can use. You can use VPN over internet, right? You have a VPN connectivity from your on-premises to OCI and then you can send data uh, through that VPN connection. You can also use, you can also use Fast Connect, which is uh, allow you to give a dedicated link from your location to OCI and goes to the high speed you can get from 1 gigabit per second all the way to 10 gigabits per second uh, on a network. Another option to use is a storage gateway. So a storage gateway is considered online transport because a storage gateway is, co is going to use your internet connectivity to co connect your on-premises environment to an object storage and then allow you to copy data from your on-premises environment to that storage gateway and then synchronize the data to the object storage in OCI. So what exactly is storage gateway? We're going to cover the storage gateway here. So a storage gateway is uh, an appliance um, that you can install in your on-premises environment and then have your applications connecting to that um, appliance and then sending data over to uh, NFES uh, file system. Okay, so this appliance is a virtual machine. You can install that uh, on your any any virtual machine you might have inside of your on-premises environment. Uh, this is a Docker container. You can easily install that on top of Linux environment and then bring that up uh, on your uh, environment. So then the storage gateway will have connectivity to the object storage, which is the OCI object storage uh, that's up and running on your account. So that makes things easier to copy it over. So if you if your application is copying the data inside of the object storage through NFS v4, the storage gate will recognize when the data landed on the specific um, mounting point, and then we'll start copying the data from that mount point to the object storage. So what's the main use case uh, for that uh, for the storage gateway? So the main use cases, the two of them is the hybrid cloud. Uh, you have on-premises application using uh, the storage uh, and OCI, and there's a few um, hybrid environments that we can we can walk through and, and cover some of those details here. Another one is one-time data migration. So if you just need to do migration of the data from your on-premises to OCI, uh, that data uh, can take you can take uh, that over um, internet connectivity. So you might want to use storage gateway just to start copying the data to that NFS uh, mounting point and then allow that to um, becoming synchro starting synchronized over to the OCI uh, object storage. Okay, so those are the two main use cases. But as you can see on this slide, there's, there's other things uh, we're going to talk to, like cloud tiering, um, backups, archives. So I'm going to go over some of those um, so this is an option that you can use for hybrid cloud, what we call tiering, using cloud sync feature. So that's going to give you the ability to connect to any local NAS that you have on your on-premises environment. And cloud sync feature will keep monitoring and watching any, any chains or any chains on, on that specific um, a file system or that specific folder. And then storage gateway will recognize that and start copying the data from your NAS to the storage gateway. And then from there, it's going to send that over to the object storage. So it's a really cool feature if you have multiple NAS um, uh, storages around your uh, on-premises environment. Or if there is a machine uh, where you want to, every time some application copy the data to that specific uh, file system, you want the cloud sync to detect that uh, and then start copying the data from that NAS to the storage gateway and then later on that's going to be copied over to the object storage. So you can run multiple sync jobs in parallel. You can have multiple sync jobs uh, watching the, uh, the storage, your NAS, and then leverage that feature to start copying the data uh, to OCI.
Another option is, is using um, for, for content repositories. So you can just have the storage gateway um, on your own site, and then all the data that's actually um, put it on, your, on, the obje on the storage gateway, we send it over to the object storage, and then from there you can access using pre-authenticated URL for all those uh, files. So if you're just looking for host, um, you know, um, some files on, inside of your on-premises environment, like files or even reports or images that you want to create as a content repository, uh, that's a great uh, use case to use object, object storage and storage gateway for. Another one is backup copies. Um, so we usually, traditionally like on-premises uh, environment, they use this three, two, one strategy uh, for uh, for backups, right? What exactly that is? So, uh, at least three copies of the data. That's one of the requirements, and then you have to use two types of different storage, and at least one copy uh, has to be um, put it offsite, offsite of your uh, of your location. So you can use cloud environment for that. You have three copies. You can have one copy on your on-premises environment, and two of the copies can be uh, placed on the, on the cloud environment and use two different type of storage so cloud storage or object storage or archive storage counts as a different type of storage for that and then one of the copy will be placed uh, off-site you can even uh, put it on different regions inside of OCI so you might have copies across regions uh, on your cloud environment okay so three dot three two one strategies um, Use tapes vaulted on premises, which is sometimes is uh, is uh, cheap, but actually keep the vaulted remotely. Uh, that's where the cost will will go up. So if you use um, um, cloud storage for that, uh, it's cheap. That's a better way to uh, keep your data secure. There's a lot of there's like all the encryption for the object storage too. The the rest uh, encryption that we provide to you, so you have all that data. Uh, your backups and uh, all the data you're putting over there on a security way. Another option is using for code disaster recovery. So uh, if you have a standby, you might want to create a standby environment uh, in a cloud, in OCI in this case, and then if there is something wrong, the storage gateway is copying your data from your on-premises to the object storage, and then you can easily access that data uh, from the object storage to recreate your environment uh, in, a, in a cloud environment. Right? So it's easy to use that for code disaster recovery. So here's some of the options for tuning and pinning for frequently used data. Uh, so as you know, Storage Gateway will synchronize the data from uh, the Storage Gateway appliance all the way to OCI object storage. So if your application or user is accessing uh, files, you need to retrieve some of the files, the file got retrieved from the OCI object storage to the Storage Gateway. If this file is like frequently retrieved uh, type of data, Storage Gateway will recognize that and cache that file locally. So that way you don't have to always request the data from the object storage to be placed in the storage gateway to give you access to your application. So that's going to have a cache locally inside of the storage gateway. Um, and you can also do some ping uh, on some files. So if you have a file that you know your application will access um, uh, every time, it's going to be fre frequently accessed by applications and users, you can ping those files and then they'll have a copy, always going to have a copy locally inside of the storage gateway. So the application doesn't have to retrieve the data from the OCI object storage to access that, right? Uh, so those give this is a really cool. Those are really cool options um, for access. Will be sent it over to the cloud, and then if your application needs to retrieve and get access to those files, so you don't have to wait um, the tr uh, traverse all the bandwidth internet connectivity to get access to those files, as you have a copy locally inside of the storage gateway. For a storage gateway performance, uh, and that's one thing you you need to understand. So, a storage gateway um, it's gonna uh, use your internet connectivity, right? It depends on your bandwidth. Uh, then I can sustain some of the uh, uploads and downloads speed here. So, as you can see on this on this slide, we have a 10 gigabits per second on the fast connect, 
and then if you have um, files that range from 10 gigabytes to 50 gigabytes the upload speed is going to be from 450 to 500 uh, megabytes uh, per second and download is going to be 700 to 750 mega, megabytes per second so you have to understand that it depends on your internet connectivity uh, how you connected from your on-premises to OCI uh, and then the size of the file is really important to you so storage gateway will perform better if you uh, have bigger files than actually putting a lot of small files uh, inside of the inside of the storage so here's some of the limits on the storage gateway resources um, you have to understand that the storage gateway doesn't exceed 10 file systems uh, per storage gateway. So if you need more than 10, the recommendation is to uh, spin up another storage gateway, a second storage gateway, uh, to bypass this limit. Another one is the local storage for file system cache, uh, which is important to understand as you're gonna cache some of the files locally on the storage gateway. We recommend that you have 500 uh, gigabytes on the space for your local, for your uh, storage gateway installation then to support uh, the file system cache. The other one is the limit uh, of number for files that you're going to put on the cache. So the amount is 20,000. So we can have 20,000 uh, files uh, on the cache. So just keep aware of that number uh, as well. And of course, to improve all the performance, like I mentioned in the slide before, try to compress the files, zip the files, uh, even if that's small, just combine them, zip them, so it'd be better. Uh, you reduce the number of objects on the namespace, so it's easy for for the storage gateway to synchronize data from the storage gateway to the to the object storage. Here's some of the um, you know storage gateway FAQ uh, questions and some of the common questions that uh, you know customers um, will ask when they're using storage gateway and one of the common questions is if you can use storage gateway as a, a general purpose um, network attached storage server and the answer is no right we're not this is not uh, it's not it's not meant to be um, a NAS inside of your environment it's actually uh, just to synchronize the data from your NAS environment to your storage gateway and then send that over to the object storage right it's not meant to be a NAS uh, storage server per se. And how much does storage gateway cost? So it's free uh, with the OCI uh, subscription. So if you have OCI subscription, storage gateway is free. You can just download the, um, the, the Docker file, install that on the Linux um, machine, and then bring it up to storage gateway uh, as well. Another question is, do I need to use object storage REST APIs to use the storage gateway? No, you don't have to, to use that. Storage gateway will, will uh, perform all the tasks for you behind the scenes. So all you have to understand is how you mount the storage gateway as an NFES uh, file system. And then all the communication from the storage gateway to, to object storage uh, will be executed to the REST API, but the storage gateway will translate that for you. Okay, there's more information on FAQ. Uh, if you click on the link, um, you're gonna find all the, the, the information there. All right, so let me do a quick uh, storage gateway demo and show you how you can um, you know, create a file system on the storage gateway, map to an OCI storage bucket, uh, and then uh, how you can map to, your, to your, your VM. All right, so this is my OCI account. Um, I'm logging in my um, my OCI, and then I have a storage gateway installed in my OCI account um, that's going to copy files uh, from my virtual machines to the storage gateway, and then sending that over to the OCI object storage. So if you go on the computing instances, I do have a VM, uh, which is an Oracle Linux VM, um, and then after I install the Oracle Linux, I downloaded the uh, the Docker. Uh, container for a storage gateway and then I install this storage gateway here on that uh, VM okay so once you install once you go to the command line install this storage gateway um, using uh, the docker container then uh, you, you you'll be able to access a web page and that web page uh, you're going to walk through to set up the storage gateway to talk to your object storage um, so I have that configured here um, I set up 
I set up the storage gateway web page and then I'm accessing through a local host here uh, on this port and then I'm gonna log with my username and password which is the admin and then once I do this is the home page of the storage gateway okay so I do have uh, two file systems that I created here already. I have the FS data and the sync one. Uh, but if you want to create a new file system, all you have to do is uh, click create file system. And you're going to give it a name for the file system. Uh, for example, test FS. And you can select if you wanna if you wanted that file system to be connected to a standard um, OCI object storage or archive OCI object storage so it depends on the on your use case or what you're trying to achieve here so if you want to just archive data uh, you can connect that to the archive bucket uh, if you want to do just a standard object storage you can select the first one then you have to enter the um, the ending API ending point of the OCI object storage if you don't know that's fine if you click here on API ending points that's going to redirect you to the documentation of the object storage and then going to provide you the um, um, the storage gateway um, API ending point right here so it depends on your region um, and then you can get the region um, you, you, you want to create your object storage and then use all, one of those API endpoints there, okay? So once you do it, um, let's just pick one here. Uh, for example, let's do a Phoenix one. Just gonna copy that back here. Once I enter the, the API endpoint, it's gonna ask me to enter the compartment OCID, the tenancy OCID, the user OCID the public keys fingerprint and the private key so this is actually how the storage gateway will authenticate to your account right um, you're going to specify the compartment where the OCI um, bucket will be created uh, then the tenancy uh, OCID uh, the user OCID they will make the authentication and then you have to create the fingerprint um, here the provided public fingerprint here on that on that option that's going to come up with the private key that you're going to generate um, as well so if you if you create a private key already for uh, your dynamic group or for your OCI CLI uh, that's exactly the same steps that you're going to use here okay so once you do that uh, there's a couple of advanced options uh, for file system configuration so you can you can define like who can actually access the NFES mounting point. So you might have I want to just specific to a specific subnet address, uh, or then give access to everyone. Uh, some of the export options as well, uh, concurrent uploads and sync policy. So this is actually a couple of things you can do to uh, make the performance a little bit better on the storage gateway um, as well. Okay. So once you have that, uh, you save, and once you save, then uh, you that's gonna is gonna start creating the the, the file system. So uh, once you do that, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna just go back here to my FS data. You're gonna have information like that, uh, where you have the mount command that you can use to start mounting uh, the NFS uh, file system on your um, local environment. Okay. So let's just show that real quick how that how that works. So if I'm I have here my, my terminal and I have a, a dev instance that I'm up and running here. And on that dev instance, um, I have a mounting point called um, SDW data. So there's no files here, right? So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna mount. Um, let's just get the command here real quick. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna mount the NFS um, NFS um, file system. So 172.16.2.11 is the IP address of my storage gateway. Okay, and I do have the FS uh, data, right? This is the file system name that I created here on storage gateway, and this is the mount point that I want to use. So SGW data. Okay, uh, so before I do the mount, let me just go back here to the OCI account and show you the object storage. So there is an object storage associated to this FS data that I created on, 
that I created on the storage gateway, which is that bucket here. And then you can see that bucket, there's one just um, uh, file saying the version of my storage gateway, right? So this bucket is associated to the storage gateway. So every file I copy it over uh, will show up here uh, on the bucket. So let's do a quick test. Let's just mount this here. Then now if I go to the SDW data, so if I create a file to say touch Flavio uh, text, um, and then we're going to see if that file will show up here um, in a minute. So let's just go back here in the matrix, just go back to the objects, and there you go. So you can see we already synchronized the file from the storage gateway to my object storage. So I can see the file here. Of course, this is a small file, right? Um, there's nothing on it. Uh, but once we start copying uh, directories or you know zip files over to the mount point, all the data will start synchronized over over there. So if you go back to the storage gateway page, uh, you can see some activity um, information. So that will show you the activity of uh, synchronized files um, here. Um, as it, it's just a new one, I don't have any complete uploads. It's just kind of refresh and getting the data from there. Uh, you can change some of the settings uh, as well, so after the fact, so if you want to do um, some of the, uh, change the compartment or change the object storage, you can do that too. So the only thing you have to do, you have to disconnect the file and then there's um, options to change that after, after you disconnect. Okay, yeah, so this is how the storage gateway works, um, really stand forward. So if you, if you want to use the Cloud Sync option, which is synchronize the data from a specific um, NAS, and then once that uh, happens, you start copying data over to the OCI object storage. Uh, on the Cloud Sync, you can start creating the job. And then once you do it, you provide the source and the target path, right? So where exactly is the, the source and the target? And then, um, and then we'll, we'll storage gate will monitoring will monitor that, and then uh, we start synchronize data from one location to another one. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a quick demo of um, how a storage gateway works, and I hope that helps you to actually you know start moving the data from your location to OCI. This is one of the options um, to use to start moving moving your data. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching.